Imagine, if you will, walking into your anatomy lab only to find someone trying to steal one of these bodies. Now, as odd as it may seem for someone to try to take a dead body, if someone did try to do it, it would be kind of noticeable, right? Wheeling one of these bodies out of here, wheeling down the hallway, might turn some heads. But what if that body fit into a small container, like our fetus that you can see here? Well, this actually happened. Someone tried to sneak into our lab and take the fetus. So we're gonna show you this incredible fetus while telling you about this crazy story, and of course, talk about the importance of protecting and caring for bodies in an anatomy lab. It's going to be quite the intriguing one. So let's do this. So let me give you some background on this incredible fetus, because this plays into the attempt to take the fetus. First, just look at how amazing this little body is. You can see the developed limb anatomy, the little ears, facial anatomy, and if I continue to rotate around, the formation of male genital structures. You can see the umbilical cord coming across here, and if I continue to rotate even further, here's the placenta. Now we estimate that this little guy is about 26 to 30 weeks along, so knocking on the door of that third trimester. And pretty much, once you get to the third trimester, all the body structures have formed, and so things are just getting larger from this point on. But isn't it just mind-boggling that we were all this small at one point? And frankly, even smaller, because we started as just one cell called a zygote. But what's also interesting about this little body is that it's over 40 to 50 years old. And this is an estimate because we don't have all of the details about this body, and again, this plays into our story. About 12 years ago, this fetus was donated to us from another educator. This educator was planning on retiring, and at the time I think I remember this person said the fetus was over 30 to 40 years old, and it was given to this person by another previous educator. So again, we don't have a detailed background on what actually happened. We don't know what the specific complication of the pregnancy was, if he passed away prior to, during, or after birth. And we also don't know what happened to the mother, but when you think 26 to 30 weeks in the year 2025, there are plenty of babies that survive if born prematurely during those 26 to 30 weeks. And so it makes you wonder, had this happened now, would he have survived? But this will remain one of the unsolved mysteries of this story, unlike the other mystery that we are about to solve. But obviously when a human dies at this early stage of development, it's very sad and tragic. So I have to believe that his family or the people that were there during the time of death donated him to science for a reason. And that is to educate people about how miraculous the developmental process is. And at least I think to help us appreciate the incredible gift of life. And so we are extremely grateful to be the stewards and caretakers of this body so that he can continue to teach many different people. Because since this body was donated to us, he has taught thousands of people during our in-person labs and millions of people with our online content. But how did this lead to the potential theft of the fetus? Well, we did a YouTube video about four years ago, and it got a decent amount of views. And one of the viewers was upset about the video, primarily because this individual felt as though the fluid in this container had actually decreased, and was upset that we hadn't refilled it and thought that this meant that we were not caring for the body properly. Now this viewer happened to be local, and actually worked in this same building where our lab is housed. And so this person had also been in the lab multiple times during classes when the fetus was shown and taught from, which also seemed to fuel this idea that the fluid had decreased and that we were not caring for the body properly. So now I have to apologize because I'm about to get on a soapbox for just a minute. We've been making online content for about five years. And frankly, most of the comments and the feedback that we get from our viewers is incredible. People talk about how they now want to donate their bodies to science. They see how amazing the human body is. They have a lot of questions and they continue to want to learn more. Again, it's mostly been overwhelmingly positive. And we are so grateful for all of it because our main goal is to educate as many people as we possibly can about this incredible machine that we call the human body. And when we first started, we would have never thought that we would have reached this many people. But every once in a while, we get a comment or even a long email about how we are disrespectful and not caring for the dead bodies properly and that we should be ashamed of ourselves. And those emails light me up 
they light a fire of fury underneath my gluteus maximus. At least, they used to. It's not as bad now because I've been working on it emotionally, but in the beginning, I would type a response to these people like, you jerk face, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're not here with me day in and day out, caring for these bodies and blah, 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 blah. And nobody really types like this. I guess Gen Zers would be typing like this with thumbs of fury. And I should probably mention, I didn't really write things like jerk face. I can write a passionately professional email when necessary, but then I would send it to my business partner, Jeremy. He'd then read it and would say, do you feel better? And I'd be like, yes, that was therapeutic. And then we would never end up sending it to the person that sent us the original email. But the point is, and the reason why it would get an emotional response out of me and how this ties into taking care of the fetus is that this is what we do. I've been working in anatomy lab since 2008. And yes, that's showing that I'm getting old now, but it is so important to me that I care for these bodies properly. Like, I know their names. I know their cause of death. And if you watch one of our recent videos on the body donation process, you'd see that we keep the tissues from each body separate from one another. And when the body is finished being utilized for educational purposes, every tissue that belongs to that body will be taken back to the body donor program so that the remains can be cremated and the ashes can be returned to the family or to a common grave site at the local cemetery. And so, full circle, coming back to the fetus, the fluid level has been pretty stable for years. It has gone down a little bit, but not to an extent that is worrisome. Now, you might think, is it really that hard just to top it off, Jonathan? And you'd be right. It shouldn't be that hard to top it off. However, this container that the fetus came in, I've tried to unscrew this lid, and it will not come undone. And as you can tell, I'm not an overly huge muscular specimen, but I do rock climb quite frequently. And so my flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus, as well as my flexor pollicis longus and flexor pollicis brevis, those muscles are at least in my opinion, decently strong, but this lid will not budge. And so then I thought, okay, I'll just get some pliers or a crescent wrench and pop this thing off. But then I thought to myself, if I force this thing open and it breaks, then I'm going to need to be able to transfer this little body into a new container. So I need to be prepared for that. And again, my number one priority with this body is to have it disturbed as little as possible. And so if I do not have to transfer the fetus, I'm not going to do it. But if the fluid level ever does go below the head, which I anticipate it eventually will, then we will get an extra container just in case this one breaks and we have to transfer the fetus and everything will likely be okay. But all of this was actually explained to the person that was not happy with the fluid level. So finally, the day of the attempt to take the fetus. It started as a peaceful, normal day here at the Institute of Human Anatomy. And one of our team members was here prepping for some videos. If you've been following us for a while, you might remember Justin. He made some awesome videos and is now doing his own YouTube channel, so be sure to go check out his channel. It's called At The Dissection Room. But while he was in here, he heard someone come into the back room. And he thought, well, that's a little weird because one, only certain people are supposed to have access to our lab. And two, why would somebody be coming into our lab through the back door? So Justin goes back to investigate, to see this individual with the fetus in hand. And Justin's kind of like, um, can I help you? And this person proceeds to tell Justin that arrangements have been made to take this fetus to another university to remove it from our care where they will add more fluid to the jar and take care of this body. And of course, when I heard that part, I'm just like, can we please get past the fluid? We've already addressed this multiple times. But Justin was like, um, no, you're not taking the fetus. And they actually went back and forth for a little while. But ultimately, Justin was not going to budge, and this individual finally left without the fetus. And then Justin immediately called me, and he said, Jonathan, I'm fuming. You are not going to believe what just happened. He then proceeds to tell me the story, and now I'm fuming and shocked. I then call Jeremy, and then Jeremy's fuming and of course shocked. And Jeremy just starts to say, Jonathan, Justin literally interrupted an attempted theft which I agreed with. This individual came in through the back room, 
purposely avoiding the main door, and knew exactly where the fetus was. This would be no different than if somebody tried to come in here and take one of our full bodies. Granted, it would be a bit more obvious willing a full body out of here, but no different. And I can only imagine what would have happened if Justin wasn't here. We would have come in a day or two later, had students in here that we were going to teach developmental anatomy to, go back into the back room for the fetus, and it's gone? We would have for sure called the police and filed a report. They would have had to check the security cameras, look into who used the key card to get into our lab. It would have been a total mess. And so, of course, a meeting was scheduled with this person, as well as supervisors and the higher-ups that work in this facility. And there were some emotions that came out during this meeting. Now, due to me wanting to maintain a great deal of anonymity for this person, I don't want to go into extreme details. However, this individual had an emotional attachment to the fetus for various reasons that, again, I don't want to divulge. The person wasn't related to the fetus or anything like that, just some emotional attachments. And this person was in tears and seemed to feel remorse about the whole situation. And we definitely appreciated that. But honestly, I was kind of hurt by the accusation of us not caring for this body properly, and obviously was upset about the attempt to take the fetus from the lab. So I had to address these feelings and reiterate to this individual that this is what we do. The fetus is safe in our care, and we know what it takes to properly preserve and care for this body, as well as the other bodies that are in our lab. So you don't need to worry about this anymore. Yeah, we did view this as an attempted theft. And frankly, transporting the fetus in your car to wherever you planned on taking it put the fetus at more risk than it's ever actually experienced over the past 12 years in our lab. But let's just move forward. We're not going to take any further action, and we wish you the best. And that's how it ended. We haven't had any issues since that time, but I still have these occasional moments where I think to myself, oh my gosh, if Justin wasn't here, what would have happened? Because caring for these bodies is our number one priority so that they can be properly used for education. And since that time, the key access to our lab has been checked and updated, and on top of that, the fetus is now also locked behind an additional door so that we can ensure that he can continue to teach many more people about the amazing human body. One of my hopes with every video that we create is not only to excite you about the human body, but also to excite you to become a lifelong learner. And if you take a little bit of time each day to learn something new, over days, weeks, months, and years, you'll build an incredible base of knowledge. And to help you with this, I have something that you can try for free. And that is the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you to get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and even AI. Brilliant's lessons are designed to be uniquely effective, as their first principles approach builds understanding from the ground up through problem solving and engaging hands-on exploration, which we can definitely relate to the hands-on experience in an anatomy lab. And all of this turns you into a better thinker and not just a memorizer. And of course, the science nerd in me is going to geek out about brilliant science courses, as these courses help you to make sense of our universe at every level, from the mechanics of simple machines all the way to the mind-bending physics of black holes. So if you want to try Brilliant for free, visit brilliant.org slash IHA, or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks so much for watching and supporting our channel, and we'll see you in the next video.